you were sat at your desk, and then a, 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 a real engineer stood behind you <laughs> and held your hands. Like, maybe like maybe, the scene from Ghost. No, yeah, like. yeah. Is, is there a special pair of gloves that has sort of two? You put you put the gloves on. They put <laughs> the their tandem hands in gloves. The top. And the yeah, type type was like, Rob, this counts as you doing it. This is you. <laughs> look, look, you're writing C++. Look at so you go. Good. Look at you go. I don't know how you feel about existential crises, but <laughs> who are you and why? So I'm, hi, I'm Rob Dodson. I'm a uh, developer advocate on the uh, Chrome team. And uh, why? I uh, mainly work on accessibility and uh, trying to sort of teach developers how to build accessible applications, make sure it's part of their, their daily habit when they're doing their I, work. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're the first one who just glosses over the why and just turns into a job description. I, I, like, we've gotten very weird. It's, it's, it's DevRel training, right? Yeah, exactly. it's just like... I, yeah, I just reverted back to my training and it just sort of kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> I imagined I was on a stage and it was going badly and I just started saying my job title. <laughs> we, we just sort of activated you there. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> well, we'll bring you, bring you back to humanity. So you've been doing an eng rotation recently. I have, yeah. It's, so what's that? Like yeah. you, you stand in the spot and spin around, but yeah. with a computer. With, with the other eng, yeah, yeah. With the other eng people. <laughs> it's uh, like a spinning class. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what I've been doing uh, the previous quarter was um, actually working on Chromium. So working in C++. Um, like that's that's dreadful. It was, because uh, I didn't know C++ when I started. So I learned enough C++ to be bad at it. And then I started shipping code in the browser, which was... And having other people yeah. review your code until you were... Yeah, so basically the way that works is like, I put up a patch and someone goes, it's horrible. And then I'm <laughs> like, they're like, down there, move it over there. And I'm like, here? And they're like, there? And I'm like, here? And they're like, yes. The funny thing was, it wasn't even an engineer I knew. It was an engineer from a different browser who was just so annoyed by my bad code that they just showed up <laughs> from, like, from like another continent and were like, Stop! Like, do it this way. And that's, a, that's a long way to run. Yes. Like, so, so another continent, they're at their <laughs> they desk, the they gloves. see your code, and they stand up and go, No! <laughs> but from, like that. from where? Uh, from, from Oslo. From yeah. Oslo. That's a <laughs> wow. long run. Yeah. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but it was really cool. I got to learn a lot about how Chrome actually works under the hood. So that was really interesting. Um, I'd actually encourage like anyone who... Um, is really interested in the browser, like you can learn enough C++ to kind of get in there. And the nice thing is, um, this is a tip I got from another person on the team, if the code around you is written well, you can kind of like figure it out. You can kind of like muddle along. And so mm -hmm. that's the case, right? I, I got in there and I found something that was similar to what I wanted to do and kind of just like... Copy paste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's say it. It's copy paste. Uh, but I, I find the same with web standards. Actually, like I kind of, I, I oh, sometimes yeah. like I'll submit a patch, and the, the feedback would be like, "Why on earth have you written like like this?" Right. And I was like, "Well, I copy and pasted it from <laughs> two two lines that way." It's like, "Well, it's wrong." Yeah. Well, I mean, how can I help being wrong in this situation? Yeah. You're like, "I'm new," and so like, uh, so yeah, uh, I was very wrong, pretty much all the time. Um, but. It was pretty gratifying, like getting something behind a flag in Chrome. I mean, like you're not, you're not really the cool. owner of a flag in Chrome, right? You, that's the well, thing you wrote. Yeah, uh, the experimental web platform features flags, which is kind of oh. like a bucket, like everything yeah. goes in there. But, uh, but yeah, I'm like the owner of like a pseudo class in CSS now. Kind that's of. cool. So what have you actually been implementing? So it's a, a CSS pseudo class called Focus Visible. Okay. And the way it works is it matches when focus matches, and then using kind of like an internal heuristic in the browser, we determined that it would be useful for the user to see some sort of focus indicator. So, so typically that means like, depending on if they're using a mouse versus a keyboard to navigate the page, if you're using a mouse, depending on the control, maybe you don't need to see one if, like, if you're clicking on a button or something like right. that. Right, I've had that problem before, and I feel yeah. like I've been like, making things not accessible because I don't want, when the user clicks with a mouse, it to, it to have that same focus style. Right. You end up like, doing weird hacks like, Oh, if it was a, if there's a mouse down, add a class somewhere or something that will hide the focus styles yeah. or something. So yeah. it's now I think I can I can start do star focus visible focus ring, and then uh, outline. Well, there's no. I mean, it, you just use outline. Oh, outline. Right, for your focus indicator. Yeah. That's outline, but isn't the focus, focus visible used to be called focus ring? Actually. Oh, we that's renamed the same thing. it. Yeah. So. Can I do because by default the outline is like kind of blurred, right? It fades out. Yeah. But can I do that? Uh, yeah, so uh, someone was telling me if you just do outline auto, it should revert to that. But that oh. actual sort of the blue thing that you see mm. there is in the user agent style sheet. Mm. Um, you can literally, it's kind of cool. If you just open up, what is it, cs.chromium.org yeah. and type in html.css, 
Like that is the user, that's like all the styles in the browser is that file. And it's like, that's the kind of thing that I, I kind of got to discover on the intro rotation is you can just go in there and you'd be like, I can just change this if yeah. I want. Like, and I you will see interesting units like the QEMs, yeah. the quirky EMs. Yeah, yeah, weird mm. stuff it's that like you just some, like, some aren't good familiar stuff with. Yeah. So like, when you're saying it's heuristics based, I mean, how, how did you get that through a standard? So that's actually, we're still working on that. That was some of the feedback that we got, which was like, we want to know more about the conformance for this thing. Um, so we're working on a patch right now to really like explain when we think it's beneficial. Um, and so typically it's like, you know, for, for anything kind of like where you know the user is going to be providing some keyboard input, like a, like a text field or something like that, you probably always want to show it then. Whereas for something where the only action is literally like click a thing, like a, a button or like a slider knob or something, you maybe don't want it in those cases. So it kind of depends on the intent of the interaction and everything. Yeah. But in the end, it's going to be left to the UI, to the UA to decide what. Yeah, ultimately, like, so there'll be some conformance criteria yeah. that we're going to kind of recommend. Um, and hopefully, everyone would follow that. Because um, yeah, you would want it to be consistent, because otherwise, it ends up with just yet another kind of broken focus experience. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So you're speaking about accessibility, right, at IO. Is, is that focus ring, or are you covering other stuff as well? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, what's new in DevTools. So there's some cool accessibility stuff that we've added there. Uh, talk about focus visible. And then the other thing we're going to talk about in the second half, uh, Dominic Mazzoni, who is an engineer on the Blink team, is going to come up and talk about accessibility object model, which oh, is the infamous AOM. Yes, or AOM, depending on how you the AOM. depending on the camp that you fall in. So, so yeah, that's actually a way to just create your own virtual accessibility tree. Um, listen for accessibility. Well, let's, let's let's stop there because what even is an accessibility tree? Oh, okay, yeah. So that's actually a good question. So this is something I didn't really understand for a long time. I was like, how does the browser make a screen reader say the things that it says? Mm. And it was always just kind of a mystery to me. Um, but basically, it's like you've got your HTML, which and, is a tree, right? Right. That gets turned into DOM, which developers are familiar with that. Um, but then the browser does this one extra step where it takes the DOM and it sort of prunes out all the parts that are not semantically interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a bunch of divs just for like positioning things on screen, it just sort of throws those away. It builds this sparse tree of just the semantic goodies, yeah. and that's the accessibility tree. And that's what actually gets handed off to assistive technology. So, so if I do something like uh, area hidden, then that's, that's my instruction to say, don't put this in the accessibility yeah. tree. Is yeah, that, you're like okay. pruning out a whole chunk of the DOM from the accessibility tree. I mean, oh. it, it kind of sounds similar coming from the CSS, like display block, display non remove the something from the rendering tree, yeah. which you also it have. Yeah, it also removes it from the accessibility tree. Yeah. It's so many trees. Yeah, so, so we're actually getting access down. to this tree? Is that? Yeah, well, you'll be able to do, there's kind of a few things. Um, you'll be able to listen to certain events that previously were only available through accessibility technology. And the other thing you can do is you can actually just kind of like create virtual branches of the tree if you want to think of it that way. Um, That's probably really relevant for like, for example, Canvas, right? In indeed, yes. Canvas, if you're building like WebGL, maybe some kind of like SVG that's hard to make accessible. Um, or maybe even just like a regular DOM component. Mm -hmm. Like for the longest time, it's been really, really difficult in some situations where you have something and it, it's almost like a in Canvas, it's almost like a black box. Yeah. With DOM, it could be just a really elaborate thing for something presentational. But now you can just hook in there, and you can just say, you know what? I know better. Exactly. You're like, I know this is all weird and elaborate, but here's the actual thing I want to be represented in the accessibility tree. Is that like a pure JavaScript API, or are we going to be markup as well? Or uh, It'll be pure JavaScript, um, at least initially. Um, OK, but sure. yeah, Yeah, so it'll be uh, all JavaScript. Yeah. So one of the struggles, I think, with accessibility is getting developers to care about it. Um, and I felt like performance is in that bucket as well. It, it's one of those sort of, it, it's slightly difficult to get budget for, for that, even though I would say, you know, well, I think accessibility, there's a lot of people who get real value from it, and with performance as well. With, with performance, I feel like AMP has done a really good job of kind of taking that to businesses and saying performance Making is Making it the default, right? Yeah, is it, what, what can we do for accessibility to achieve the same? Yeah, so it's tough because accessibility, um, some of the things, because the area is like really broad, some of the things fall into like user experience and design, so color contrast and stuff like that. People tend to kind of like pick that up and, and incorporate it into their design process a little bit better. You get into other areas, though, like screen reader support and ARIA, and a lot of people are like, well, that's not my problem, right? It's sort of out of sight, out of mind. If it's not something that's directly affecting the developer, they kind of just don't care about it. So I think what has been really successful for a lot of teams has been um, doing a more like inclusive design approach. So making sure that you're bringing in people who may have disabilities or impairments into the design phase, into yeah. the product testing phase, um, and you know even like also making sure that those people that like 
you're employing those folks on your team even, that engineers on your team like might have disabilities and things like that. Because if it doesn't work for literally the engineer on the team, like it's not gonna ship, right? Pretty much. And so we need to just like, I think in general, do a better job of like including more people in our in our design practice. Um, and as a result, hopefully it just becomes something that everyone just does as part of their kind of their daily habit. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for Good having me. Good luck with your talk. Yeah. And I don't think, I, I thought I, that, that, that was good. something. I, the, the, you can't do that. You can't no, set really me should. up and then look at me and just like, and. You, you go finish this. And ta-da. I, I, I think I totally messed you up by saying thank you for having me. Too it's too. fine. It's fine. Do you want to try that again? No, no we're just going to leave this. Oh, okay. This, 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 this is the ending now. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right, well. Uh, we're going to keep dragging it out like the, the, the final Lord of the Rings. Should we it's do like so a, many endings. Like a long gonna, fist bump or when, something? When is, when is your talk? It's soon, right? 11.30? So we're just going to go straight. This, this ending is going to last straight <laughs> Right into talk. the talk. Okay, that's then, good. That's good. All right. All right. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs>